Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, Dr. John here for Extract Lab, Extract Talks. How you doing? I'm yeah. Stefan Egan. All We're right. here at Extract Lab. Why don't you give you a little introduction to yourself there, Stefan? Oof, it's a long story, so we'll cut it short. I've uh, been working with Extract Lab for about a year. I have uh, ample experience in cannabis cultivation and extractions using various methods of extraction, whether it be hydrocarbon, ethanol, CO2, and separations. Sweet. And we're going to be talking about our favorite subject in the world today. Cannabis. And moldy weed. Lots of mold going around Lots this, in this industry. Lots of mold. <laughs> That's true. It's true. So we're going to be talking a little bit about what the sources of uh, moldy weed are, what, what you have to watch out for in maybe in your facility, uh, you know, bringing moldy weed mm -hmm. into your facility. Yeah, one thing uh, also is maybe how to remediate it. If you right. have some remediation techniques, we'll be talking a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. One of the key questions that we get from a lot of our customers is, uh, does that moldy weed make it through the extraction process? Depends so on how you're extracting, but yeah. Yeah, it depends on what you're extracting. So we're going to be talking about all that stuff. So before we get started, we'd like you to uh, take advantage of our resources. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, we got all kinds of stuff. Anything you could be interested in when it comes to cannabis extraction and refinement, it is on the website under the resources tab. Check it out. If you guys want to like us on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. So let's get started here. So moldy weed can come both indoor and outdoor. Obviously, mm -hmm. right. in, in an outdoor setting, it's pretty much a given. Like, yeah, you you're, you're going to have I mean, it. It's gonna, I mean, one of the things that we had seen in the past was people were putting hemp that they had mm -hmm. harvested. They hadn't quite dried it. Right. They put it into a super sack, and the super sack had a poly liner on it. Mm -hmm. And it just became a just wonderful got hot. little... Yeah. A uh, wonderful little incubator for yeah. all kinds of mold. <laughs> yeah, and so, so, you know, okay, they bring it to your facility, drop it off, say, we want you to do this, and you open up the bag, and mm. it's, it's like literally opening up a bag of Just spores. sourness. <laughs> oh. It's bad. It's real bad. Okay, that's what you want to avoid. You obviously Absolutely. don't. You, that is what they call cross-contamination, external contamination, mm -hmm. or contamination within your facility. You'd want to do that inspection and make sure you're not bringing that in. Also, from the standpoint of the facility, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that when you're doing those inspections of your biomass right. materials, that you have some sort of uh, positive pressure mm -hmm. in, in the building, you know, some sort of external uh, you know, sweep of the air so right. it's not actually sucking the air from where you're doing the inspection mm -hmm. into the rest of your facility, right. causing maybe contamination. Um, it could be a source of contamination. for so. For those of you who are doing GMP risk assessments and things like that, that's one thing that you need to be thinking about. Absolutely. You don't want to be cleaning out all that mold with your CO2 extraction and then find it in your isolate on the back end because it was stuck in your vents. Yeah, because you didn't run the right HEPA filters or you had no. the wrong, you had the wrong um, you know, cascade mm -hmm. in terms of your room pressurization. So keep that in mind. And um, Yeah, so, okay. So that's kind of the whole in outdoor story. It's pretty yep. obvious, right? right? What about the indoor story? Microclimates. I mean, as this industry is expanding, rooms are getting bigger. That means more microclimates within that cultivation facility and environment, which is an ample opportunity for powdery mildew and other molds to start growing. Well, that, how about that white mold? Yeah, that powdery mildew white is mold full. cannabis. It'll destroy your crops quick. Yeah. Really quick. You know, I've seen white mold on other, you know, like plants. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've seen that like in greenhouses and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a common thing. It is. It's, it's hard to deal with. Yeah. It, once you have it in your facility, it's going to be there for a long time. Yeah. So you, so how do you combat that? Well, there's a few different ways. I mean, people are using uh, UV technology, x-ray technology, um, ozone. X-ray? X-ray. Oh that's, that's, yeah. that's, like, that's like, I'm going to kill you type of thing. <laughs> I think it's, uh, You're the, just, the, just, the just looking to the x-ray. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's good. But I, I, yeah, obviously UV and they have those uh, like advanced uh, oxidation processes mm -hmm. and uh, yep. also ozone, right? Absolutely. You got to be careful with that ozone, guys, though. I mean, yeah. you know, they, like ozone's like a very high, highly oxidant. I mean, it's a high oxidation mm -hmm. a potential associated with that. So right. it's not something you really want to like, you know, be no. breathing Luck in. Luckily, know, though, there's manufacturers <laughs> that, are, that have been developing this technology for quite yeah. some time. So I think when it comes to using it, you're, fit, you're safe for right. the most part. It's just one of those things where the risk assessment has to be done, right? Have you ever used uh, hydrogen peroxide on moldy bud? Absolutely. Obviously, it's another way to get a very highly, uh, you know, high oxidant, mm -hmm. high oxidation uh, type of 
stuff. So how does that work though? How do you dry it? I suppose you just dry it afterwards. Same drying method after on the back yeah. end. Yep. Does just, it work good? Yeah, it, it yeah. absolutely does. Yeah, okay. So that that's one way you can do it. For those of you want to do some DIY stuff, no problem. I mean, I don't know if you really uh, that's a scalable process too. Why could you just use that? I guess while well, getting rid of water is really not very fun. It is, but I will tell you that a lot of the outdoor cannabis cultivators do do uh, or conduct a, a dip or a wash after harvest, right? So they'll fill a bucket up with sodium bicarbonate uh, with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide or H2O2 in it, and they will dip the branches and the main colas into this solution, mm -hmm. thus removing any potential thrips, bugs, and molds into that water solution. That's pretty good. And then so they hang dry it like they normally do. What kind of concentration levels do you need for that? Uh, no more than 3%. 3%, I guess you'd have to buy it straight up. I mean, you know, they used to use that for like rocket fuel. Yeah. And stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's many yeah. applications. The other thing would be, um, we, uh, Doug and I were, we were working on one uh, where they were destroying cyanide with with H2O2. Really? Um, this is back a long time ago. And I remember very clearly, uh, there was a, there was a big tank of of uh, H2O2, good thing it didn't leak because of course it would produce peroxides right. and then would, that's an explosion, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that, oh, that's one thing you gotta watch out for, obviously when you're dealing with peroxide, just mm -hmm. a safety note here, um, if you are dealing with concentrated solutions of peroxide and you let them evaporate, you're gonna be producing kind of like an explos explosive mm -hmm. type of peroxide um, powder and those things can, even with uh, small amounts of mechanical jarring can produce explosions. So if you're going to use it, go ahead and dilute it. You know, Absolutely. dilution is the solution to pollution. There you go. That's the indoor, the outdoor. We talked about bringing it into your facility, doing mm -hmm. the inspections, thinking about how um, the facilities need to be monitored mm -hmm. and made for that particular activity. So now it comes into your facility. Um, how about decarboxylation? Do you think that's going to take rid of, get rid of the mold? Absolutely not. I don't think no. so either. Not, not a chance. I mean, you know, so that stuff is, is pretty tough. 150 degrees under vacuum, it's probably going to uh, congregate in its little shell. It's not going to uh, get out there. Mm -hmm. They're going to call it, they're probably little colonies. They oh, all yeah. kind of bundle together. They get a little warm. Mm -hmm. I know 150 degrees is pretty serious. So like uh, they can use those those high temperatures to, to kill bacteria, but we're talking about molds and, right. and spores mm -hmm. and things like that that just are kind of heat resistant. For sure. I think what you mainly see is that the casing of the spores is what's left behind. Right. So the internals might be cooked off, but you still have microorganisms and issues with that mold in that casing, right, which then becomes a pretty significant contaminant on the back end. Right, it would be, it would be. So, yeah. So anyway, that's one thing. I mean, people who are growing fungus, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, you think that fungus and mold, you know, they right. are different guys. Right? Very different. Very so, different. So uh, you want to make sure that you don't have the mold growing on the fungus. I mean, we've all seen mushrooms before right. with, with with mold on them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. So yes, weed can get moldy Absolutely. Um, and want to figure out what to do. So decarboxylation is not going to take care of it. Definitely not. And if you are in the world of trying to get premium bud and you have a non-premium flower to, to make that premium bud, I know a lot of people have been using like UV, mm -hmm. they've been using uh, like ozone chambers mm -hmm. to help them along the way, right? Right, absolutely. So, and, and does that work? It does, it does. I think, uh, you know, there's, there's whole industries or nations that have cannabis industries that utilize kill steps, as they're called, yeah. to kill off the, the contaminated bud or the moldy bud. Right. Um, it works well. It's been validated. It's just not cheap. Right. Uh, you could use gamma rays too. Uh, yeah. You could use. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that would be a lot more fun. Uh, oh, yeah. There are those. There are those things that you get in the conveyors and right. you put them come in. So then, those are some other options. But if you're going into extraction, so you got ethanol extraction, you got CO2 extraction, you maybe have butane extraction. Does the mold get through those extraction mechanisms um, on any of the cases? I know that with CO2, we don't have any problems with that typically. Ethanol, um, you know, it, it mm. can get through. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. You know, so that's something you would need to think about. You know, if you had you do a secondary distillation step, probably that's where you would actually kill it off. So mm -hmm. if you were doing ethanol and then you did your uh, decarboxylation, right. you know, cooking the living daylights out of mm -hmm. the oil, and then in, and then subsequent to that distillation, I, I don't think the spores get into the distillate. No, I, I, I haven't seen that either. So, yeah, so they, I mean, under those cases, you would have to actually, um, like, distill the spore. Right. <laughs> that would be really Just difficult Just melt it all do. down. 
Yeah, so anyway. Which then creates a longer process. It's less efficient, gets more costly. Like there's all problems associated when you're, right. when you're doing it that way. With the CO2, it just doesn't extract, okay? Because the, the spores are very hydrophilic. Mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't extract well. So, um, you know, that's one thing. It's not really soluble in the CO2. Right. Um, and so that's one of the main reasons why, uh, you know, it's going to be really stuck in your raffinate. Um, and you, you could take your raffinate then and dispose it out outdoors where there's lots of mold uh, right. in the air already. Right? Which happens so, to be good for the, the soil anyway. Right, right? exactly. So, so it's a win. Mold in the soil, exactly. Right? That's, that's what we call living soil. There you go. So, um, okay, so then that brings us to butane, um, you know, and basically does it make, through, make it through butane? I do know that there are have been some instances where um, you, you may see a mold make it through that. I, I don't think, in my view, that the same logic that applies to CO2 would apply to butane or propane. Right. I mean, it's just not soluble, um, mm -hmm. but I have heard it, but I don't know that you never can tell. Does it, is it coming off from like environmental exposure after the fact or, or what? Well, I've you know seen, I, mean? I have done quite a bit of hydrocarbon extraction with butane, propane, and blends, and there is mold coming through. Okay. Um, now, with the recent implementation of like CRC columns, right, mm -hmm. those color remediation yeah. columns, yeah. you can have an additional packing that will do some, some remediation of those molds. However, they're not legal in every environment that you're operating in, so right. they cannot be used. Right. Um, I, but with that said, Hydrocarbons will pull molds. You right. will see it. And in fact, when you evaporate off your solvent and you're looking at your shatter or wax, you can actually see them collected in your oil. Right. Right. A nice dark blue or black, like, you know, specks within your oil. That's the mold. It all concentrated. That's a problem. Absolutely. That's a problem. So I wonder why they're getting through. I wonder if that is a post contamination thing. Mm -hmm. um, maybe. I'm not really sure. But let, let's kind of talk about that. Um, talk about containment. For right. example, okay, mm -hmm. okay, you're doing all this work uh, to keep mold out of your facility, especially out of your extraction facility. Right. Um, certainly, your CO2, you can remediate it with your CO2, mm -hmm. okay, so it's not going to be going through, okay, fine. But then after the fact, if you're going to let your oils just sit out and not, not have them covered or have them exposed to the air, um, it's very important that that exposure is, is number one, it's limited, mm -hmm. and that it's, it, it's exposed to only like filtered air, right. for example. So that's what they call level three, they're ISO clean rooms, essentially, right. and uh, they have high uh, degrees of specifications mm -hmm. associated with them, so that, that there can be some open exposure. Right. Now, we try to eliminate that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That's why we have containment systems, right. so that you don't have exposure from the extraction into mm -hmm. the distillation. It's all contained one unit right so uh, that's 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 a good it's idea crucial. if you want to get it it will reduce the requirements on the levels uh, the levels required for your rooms, right. right so right. why have a massive room requirement when you can have a system that handles it all yeah right? exactly what's the point in adding a million dollars in HVAC yeah. that's, the, just, that's a million just a just million dollars just a million dollars yeah, yeah. Or, or half a million dollars <laughs> in HVAC per room right. when you can have a containment system so the other aspect to mold is just external contamination mm -hmm. contamination from the air most pharmaceutical companies deal with that by HEPA systems right. and then uh, specifications on their rooms. And if there is a open use, they would specify the, the better room mm -hmm. for that so that you could actually do the open room. Because right. there are some times that you can't avoid it. Right. right. It's kind of an interesting topic. A lot of people have been really talking a lot about it, you know, and we've mm -hmm. had so many questions from the community at large. Can I use CO2 to remediate? Can I mm -hmm. use CO2 to get the mold out of the weed? What do I do with moldy marijuana? Right. You know, that type of thing. Yeah, I just, I think it's important to really know what you're getting into when you're doing this type of work. You know, if you're using ethanol, it's great for DIY. It scales okay, it gets expensive quick, and you have a lot more post-production, right? Because you got the cleaning of the contaminants and things like that. Hydrocarbons the same way. Right. Uh, with CO2, you, you get, you know, essentially a mold inoculator. Right. Right, out of the, right off the jump, so you don't have to worry about that problem. Right. Which is why I prefer to use it, right? right. It just makes sense to me. Why make the process harder? I agree. The only thing I'd add to this whole conversation is those of you who want to know how to, for example, test for molds, mm -hmm. we typically use the 3M uh, Petri dishes, the yep. 3M uh, foils. They all come uh, specifically made so that you can inoculate them mm -hmm. in a clean bench. You can test for all the different types of, of molds that right. are out there. Um, also, aflatoxins, for example, would be a part of you know, that type kind of test regimen. Mm -hmm. So you'd want to test for what I call test for bugs, yeah. you know. <laughs>
And you can do that. I mean, you can set that up in your own uh, facility. Mm -hmm. It's really not a lot of money. And the Petri film that uh, some of these companies have put out, they've made it very convenient. In addition to that, you've got colony counters and all that stuff. You just take the film, you inoculate it. You make sure you're using uh, septic uh, processes so they're sterile, everything's sterile. And then once they are growing, then you put them into the counter and then they'll tell you how much mold is in your, your operation. Right. So it's really not a very capital intensive to... Not to, at all. But it could destroy your revenue if you don't catch it. Yeah. Right? True, true, true. And sometimes people don't like to measure it because they don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not the guys you want to be buying from. Well, this weed doesn't smoke like yeah. it used to. It's a little harsh <laughs> on the throat. It's a little harsh on the throat. It's got a little bit of the something in there. With this. Yeah, aflatoxins. Um, I have never seen a positive for aflatoxins. Mm -hmm. in, 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 I've seen hundreds of tests. I'm sure that like uh, some of the laboratories out there that do higher volume have seen, have right. maybe have seen it. I'm sure they're seeing everything. Yeah. But yep. Anyway, well, thanks for joining us. Hey, if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave some comments. Uh, we monitor the comments. Uh, if you have any um, mm -hmm. you know, comments or concerns, push that positive like button. There you go. Yeah, we'd like to see that. Um, but if you do have something where you want to uh, come to us and ask us questions about the process or anything, if Stefan and I or Doug or any of the sales guys here can help you with that, um, just go ahead and go onto our website, mm -hmm. extract e -X -T -R -I -K -T lab com, right. and uh, interact with our little joy bot that there we got go. out there. It's a very knowledgeable bot. Very knowledgeable bot. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Talk to you later. Bye now.